What's up guys and welcome back to the next Transformers Studio Series video. In this video, as you read in the title, I will be doing a ranking video of all the Transformers released in Wave 10. That including Devastator, Lead Foot, Skipjack, Overload, Blitzwing, Cliffjumper, Topspin, and Soundwave. So, um, just some things about this video. I will be taking a look at the, the figures and everything. And if you do remember some of my original reviews about some of these figures, I did not um, show you like all the, like a lot of features. And in this video, um, that'll make up for it. And then it'll show you all the extra features and everything, all the stuff and everything. I will not be showing you how to transform them as this is just a ranking video. And I will be showing you some stuff on their boxes and, and whatnot. So now, so let's get to it. In this video, we are going to um, rank them from my least favorite to my most favorite. So let's get started. Taking the eight, eighth spot, it has to go to Studio Series 64 Deluxe Class Autobot Cliff Jumper. Now, the big reason for that, why Cliff Jumper is ranked so low at like literally the bottom of all the rankings, is that he is he is one of the least accurate figures actually, besides World War II Bumblebee and Hot Rod. Um, Aside from those, this figure is actually very inaccurate. I will show you why in a moment. Um, one of the big reasons why he's inaccurate is his weapon accessory. is the wrong weapon accessory. If you do remember in the Battle Battle of Cybertron, um, the movie Bumblebee, in the, uh, with the scene where all the Autobots and Decepticons are fighting on Cybertron, we do see Cliff Jumper just for a glimpse with a different gun. And I believe he's holding it with both of his hands. Um, it, and can, if someone can tell me, um, tell me in the comment section down below if he was holding with both hands or just one. But uh, this is just the wrong accessory. It's supposed to be, I believe, bigger and I think black one of the other big reasons um, because of all this ugly kibble in the back it, he is like a shell former like it this piece is just like I just feel like it was unnecessary for Hasbro to put it but it's just to complete the car mode and everything it's like a giant backpack just sitting there and everything and one thing is that these pieces just keep flapping out and flapping out and flapping out but you can just press them back in and these doors do the same thing they do not tab into this little slot right here and they just keep going out. So, and also, it's kind of hard sometimes to post Cliff Jumper um, with his feet and everything. You have to adjust every single joint and everything so that he can be like perfect and everything. The one thing I do like is that the front is nice and all, and uh, it's pretty nice and all. Um, oh, and also one other thing is that you see this part, um, you're assuming that this should be like the front of the car and everything, but in reality, it's not. This piece is. And that is one of the big reasons I do not like Cliff Jumper's mold. The character I do like. Um, I mean, honestly, who could not not miss out on this character? But the mold is just just not that good, because he because like as you transform him, this part's gonna make the front of the car, and not and this should shouldn't even be there. This should make the part of the, the front part of the car. I don't see why Hasbro did that. Other than that, a great figure and everything, nice amount of playtime, sturdy and everything. The only thing that's bad is just the feet that they keep flapping out. But it's just easy to fix and everything. The the wrong weapon accessory and the incorrect transformation. Now let's take a look at Cliff Jumper's box. And now taking a look at Cliff Jumper's box, we can see that um his box is pretty nice and all a decent um red color and everything, but um this is actually incorrect the the red color scheme on the the toy itself and also we should have more black um pieces around like the chest area and so that it could look somewhat like more transformery but but no Hasbro just went the lazy way and then just painted that in red um but I do like that there are some black pieces to, that are correct toward the the character of Cliff Jumper on the side right here um other than that, a nice figure. Now let's check the side of his box. Here we can see 64, Cliff Jumper, Cliff Jumper's face right there. Right here in the back of the box we can see some contents right here. We can also see that um, we can see Cliff Jumper, some product images of both his robot and his car for which actually I believe it is near impossible to try to pose him in that form. And also, they also do make the make his gun look big in the in the box. When in reality it is not. 
Also, one other thing is that there is a lot of paint applications all over the body that, that did not come with the toy and just made this figure just a pink mess. Um, but other than that, I really do like this figure and everything. Um, just the one thing I don't like is some paint applications on it and the molding and just the pieces and the accessory. Other than that, a great figure. Um, right here we can see the another um, CGI render of of Cliff Jumper, and on the top we can see Transformers Bumblebee, and at the bottom it just shows you that it comes with the figure and the accessories. So now some final thoughts about Cliff Jumper, um, as he is ranked in eighth place, the well, like the lowest of low place right now. Um, well, well, that was my personal opinion of why Cliff Jumper. Um, why I ranked Cliff Jumper so low. Other than that, a great figure and everything. Tell me in the comment section down below if you would rank Cliff Jumper to to another place or something. Um, tell me if you would like put him higher or even very lower. I, although you can't go any lower than this, as being one of the uh, one of the worst Studio Series figures. But it is actually a good figure to play with and everything brings joy and everything. The only thing that is bad about it is that the mold and everything that I said before. Other than that, a great figure. Now, let's move on to the next Transformer. And floating his way into 7th place comes Studio Series 62 Deluxe Class Soundwave. Now, Soundwave as being one of the main Transformers in all of, all of the Transformers um, movies and shows and everything. Why I ranked him so low is that he is completely, completely, almost inaccurate. One of the big reasons is the chest. Right here, um, there should be like a hole where Ravage would come out and, and tentacles would come out. But I've seen on eBay some upgrade kits and everything that the tentacles do attach into this little slot and everything. Um, what, and that is pretty like weird. One, I do remember in the film they do come out like through the chest and everything. Um, not down, down here. Um, oh, but other than that, a good figure. I do like his satellite model. The legs are, are magnificent. They are completely accurate as, as the shoulders are. But the one, one part that is kind of inaccurate are the hands. If, if you do remember in the film, he his hands did like see, seem like they did connect like that, and not somewhat separated. But personally, I believe that Hasbro did that on purpose because he does grab onto the satellite, and if they wanted to make a DNA design upgrade kit, he attaches to a satellite or something that'd be cool and everything. But other than that, that other than that, um, he is a a nice figure and everything. One one um major area that I that that is kind of weird is that it is completely hollow right here when I believe they should have like implied some sort of sort of plastic to hide in everything right there and make it um somewhat somewhat thick and everything and look like there was more gears and stuff now it just looks like a piece of plastic with some lights and the blue paint applications also the paint applications on on the sound wave are totally inaccurate if you remember in the film he did seem a bit of a silver and a little bit of blue and right here um these little these little parts right here should be in blue and and not just gray i think i think hasbro just mispainted this figure um, and they could have done a way better job. And as this being the first figure that does come with, um, um, I believe this is a display display stick panel thingy. Um, as being the first figure coming with that, that is pretty cool. And one thing that that does make no sense at all is that his head does tuck in here. I do remember in the film that it did seem like it was fused inside, but I don't, I don't see um, what purpose was, was for that because it isn't in any of the steps. And if you do look at some product images on the box, I'm going to show you in a bit, he does not um, tuck in his head or anything. He just stays out like that. And these, these parts right, these parts right here look like, look like mini drills right here are actually shaded in blue on the product. And now I am going to show you some um the the box and everything and show you why why I ranked this figure so low. Now taking a look at the box, we can see that Soundwave. Um, we can see that the 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 toy itself and the CGI render model is completely completely different. We can see that um that these parts right here are shaded in blue when the CGI render is in red and these parts do come out from right here and they are coming out from the feet um 
Although, although, although this is the best Hasbro could do, I would prefer if Hasbro did make make the bottom right here where the hands are, um, make make it like like curve and everything so that it could look really cool. And might and might have um, put this piece like right here so that it could connect right there and not put it on the feet. The feet could they could have found a way to make them to make them tuck in right here or something like, like Studio Series 51 Soundwave as it did tuck into transform into car mode as they could have found a way to to do that um and I believe um this is actually Soundwave's um Cybertronian form his actually protoform form and and then when he scanned the Mercedes Benz and everything that's how he he, he looks like in Dark of the Moon with uh, all those body parts and everything so now let, let's take a look at more of the box Right here we can see number 62, Soundwave right there. We can see the CGI render model like I showed you before. Right here taking a look at the box, here's what I was talking about, that um, the mist paint application. It is a different shade of gray as the feet, um, I believe, are shaded in dark and that's good, they did. And and there are no little dots on him and then right here on the toy, it did come with like a bunch of little dots and everything. And, the, and even the, like I said, the head doesn't tuck in right here. And the display stick is a d completely different color. It is a light transparent, like a more light transparent blue, like mixture of white. And this one is just blue and transparent. Um, other than that, um, great figure and everything. I do like the backdrop it does come with. It brings this figure to life and everything. So now, without further ado, let's take a look at um, our set, our, our transformer that takes in into our seventh place spot. And now taking our sixth spot in in all of our Transformers has to go to Studio Series 67 Voyager Class Skipjack. Now, um, as I know, many many of you would rank this figure um, maybe higher is due to the fact that he is a complete Rampage remodel, which is good and everything. I do like that. Um, I just feel like there was too much yellow on him, and they could have added some more um, small um, paint applications as near the armpit area. I'm gonna. Um, it does say war warning. Uh, keep clear right there. Um, they could have done like more little paint applications on. Um, skipjack uh, for for a more accurate look and everything but other than that a great figure also um, one thing is that he's kind of like a shell former and they, these pieces actually in the film um, because he's the same mold as Rampage um, actually they turn into um, these these pieces right here that appear on his arm and everything that are just dangling there as like bullet cases and everything that he threatens um, Sam and Sam, Sam and his parents right there in the film. Although this is Skipjack, not Rampage. Rampage threatens them. Skipjack does. I'm just saying that it does have the same mold and it does kind of transform kind of incorrectly, but the rest is pretty good. Um, I would have loved if they added some blaster accessories, as you can see right here. Um, this is actually the steam right here that come like the steam pipes that that do connect right there. I just added them there because they do look like his 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 weapon accessories as he does show in the film. I really wish they could have made them like big and large and everything. I could have just stayed on the hands and everything, but I really wish Hasbro could could have done that. But unfortunately, they did not. Um, now let's take a look at Skipjack's box, and I will show you why. Also, one little reason why I ranked him so low. And now taking a look at uh, Skipjack's box, we can see that um, the CGI model right here is actually the same CGI model for Rampage, and also because obviously Rampage is 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 like technically Skipjack, but in red and everything. Um, one thing is that you do see his hand kind of bending and actually the the figure itself does not bend and I do wish that these little pieces right here can turn into these kind of flappy things right here and can extend like that so it would have made the figure like more accurate but also it is um, so that his tractor mode could be complete I mean his bulldozer mode could be complete and um, be more solid and sturdy and everything so um that is one molding thing I don't like about Skipjack or Rampage, but other than that, a great figure. His box is nice and everything comes with a nice CGI. And here is the reason um, um, why also I ranked him solo, is that 
If we see on his hands right here, we do see the blaster accessories, which are the same vents, but we do see one yellow and one black, which does not make any sense. They should just be black, both of them. And then we do see right here, both are black, which is kind of weird uh, and everything. Also, one other thing is that I do feel like um, Skip Skipjack is just like making fun of Studio Series 37 Rampage just in yellow or something like that. Um, but other than that, a great figure and everything. I just, like I said before, I just really wish it did come with some hand accessories right here. As the steam vents, they're not attached, so I believe they, they just originally planned with two. Um, steam vents that, that, that these ones will, will just go right here on the body which are right here but unfortunately Hasbro did not they could have just added the steam vent and the and the weapon accessories but unfortunately Hasbro did not um, do that they just went the lazy route and um, just um, just made this and I believe they did that because I am not so sure if they are associated with DNA design upgrade kits or anything like that I, I'm not so sure if they are like to do that on purpose so like they could get more money or something. I'm not so sure, but I don't know why that that just seems like it. And taking one final look at the box, we see Devastator in his CGI model. Um, we can see the Devastator um, of many um, constructor guns such as Long Call, Overload, Mix Master, which is the head, Scrapper, and Scavenger. We do not really see. Um, um, what's it called? High Tower or Scrap Metal or Skipjack, but we do see those. And also, one other thing is that we do um, see some yellow right here at the top, which on the figure itself it didn't um, attach any yellow features on the top, which is kind of weird. And also, if you look at the bo at the box that I'm going to show you at um, uh, later on in the review, um, that it does not show any yellow applications or anything on it, so that is just kind of weird. So. That that um, just concludes our our, our skipjack um, ranking. So now let's move on to our next our next Transformer Studio series. Taking the fifth spot in in our Wave Ten list has to go to Autobot Top Spin Studio Series sixty three. Now. The big reason, as I know many people would rank Top Spin lower or higher, is that um, I just ranked him near the middle and everything, is because this figure is actually um, closer at, closer to accurate than, than other Transformers also. It is also um, kind of inaccurate, kind of accurate, and there are some paint applications that I do need to go over that, that should, should, should be on the figure itself. So now, without further ado, let's um, take a look at all the features. Right here, we can see that he does come with some electrifying um, thingies right here. Um, some machine guns on the sides and on the back as well. Um, the back ones do not detach. I really wish that they did, so that so that it can so that um, this piece could be free, and then like they could attach somewhere else. Also. Um, there are some mist paint applications right here, which this should be in blue and not really in, in gray or anything. Also, these pieces are actually pretty nice and accurate. I just really wish they could make the arms a bit bulkier and everything. Um, the head sculpt is nice and everything. Um, they can do a 360 turn. It is connected to a ball joint, which is pretty nice and everything. Um, but also, um, this figure is pretty nice and everything. Um, the car mode is what really is kind of uh, kind of messed up. Is that it doesn't have some of the paint application shown in the film. Um, we um, at the we we see a lot of NASCAR stickers in the film, but unfortunately with the toy it did not come with any of the NASCAR um, stickers at all. So which is kind of a, a, a bummer for this figure as the other records as well as they could have just added the NASCAR stickers and or just waited a little bit more so that um they can they can get a license Hasbro could get a license for 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 from the companies like this um was supposed on his arms they were supposed to say Lowe's and like stuff like that uh, and I believe on 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 our other record, um, Roadbuster, he was supposed to have like more brands like Mountain Dew or stuff like that, you know. And Leffa actually being the most accurate record does come with a Target symbol on it, and also being a Target exclusive, that's kind of a kind of like cheating a little bit. But um, other than that, um, all figures are great and everything. Although I really wish it did come with the NASCAR stickers. 
now let's now let's take a look at Topspin's box. And also taking a look at his box, um, um, we can totally see that that Topspin is almost, if not, um, the 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 ha like half halfway accurate toward to a CGI render. One thing is that right here we can see that there are um, like so, some more paint applications and everything that it's more blue and everything and that there is not that much um what's it called what's it called that much gray on the on the figure on the CGI render and on the figure there is a lot of gray and no blue applications on the arms whatsoever if not right here there is a hollow gap right there which is kind of kind of um it's just for the hands to go in but they could have found a way to seal up the gap and then uncover it and everything also, um, one other thing is that we do see, I believe, a machine gun right there. Um, is actually, or like, I believe the muffler of the car, which is actually separate, um, like separated, and is that, and for the toy, it's actually connected. So I believe what what top the, what the figure should look like. The most accurate representation of the figure should be about like this. Should be about like this. But um, one thing also is that his elbows are not that good. Uh, the the toy the, the toy the toy's elbows are not that good, and I believe the front should have more silver and not gray paint applications. I do like the silver right here on the belly, but on the chest they should have added some silver paint applications right there. Taking a look at his box is pretty nice. Oh, the side of the um, picture is just the same CGI but zoomed in with his face and everything. Uh, the box is nice and everything. It shows um, that the Hasbro got a license to copy this exact car and everything. They could have just gotten more license, like a little bit more licenses to like like paint applications. But but um um I believe that like I've seen other YouTubers um do paint applications on them. So I believe um it's it's just better to just do them yourself if you have a good artwork and anything, or just tell someone to do it if they if you know someone who could do it. Um. The, 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 oh, also the product right here. We can see that the legs are almost completely in blue. And while the toy itself, the legs, are um, the, the tips and everything are gray and everything. And well, this is just blue and everything, not gray at all. Also, we can see that is also a different shade of blue, which is actually a bummer. And they could have just, um, I don't get why Hasbro just make, makes the proto, the prototype, um, version right here like so good and everything and they just make the actual figure not not really that good and 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 on the last side of the box we do see top spin but posing a different way uh, like if he was gonna fire at a Decepticon or something so without further ado let's take a look at I believe our fourth what, what may be uh, the transformer in our fourth place so without further ado let's take a look at our fourth place winner and now taking a look at our lucky winner in our fourth place has to go to Constructicon Overlord. And oh my gosh, this figure is just magnificent. As being one of my favorite Constructicons, as I am going to do a regular video of all individual Constructicons soon. Um, I believe this figure is actually capturing how Overlord... Um, at the best overload they can do. Although some concept arts I did see is that overload did have four legs, and the figure itself came with um, came with two. And I believe the Dev Devil Salvior Devastator came the over that Evil Overload did come with two as well. The arms are magnificent. The paint applications and everything. I just wish they could have just made this spike at the top longer. As um, in the CGI render on the box, I will show you in a bit. The, it does seem very longer, and other than that, a great figure. And is the figure that does come with the the the, the vortex grinder at the top of Devastator's head. Um, is actually the figure that comes with it when he should have when it should have come with um, Studio Series 55 um, Constructed Con Scra Scavenger, but but they they decided to put it with Overload, and I believe the 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 dump truck mode is not that accurate. I believe that the Hasbro could have done a better job and made it more hollow in the dump truck area, where like it would store a lot of junk and everything, and would have um, attached more green parts, which which in the film. 
and we do see that Overload um, has like a bunch of stuff, like not that much, but you can assume that he has a lot of stuff on the back. And if you look at, C uh, at Devastator in the film, we do see that on the back he does have a lot of green stuff that probably came from Overload's body parts. So without further ado, let, let's take a look at this figure. And starting off with the front, we can see a bunch of nice paint applications and everything. The sides, the arms are nice. And the spike I was telling you about um, should be like about like longer and everything and have like a grappling hook and stuff. And I believe this figure should have came with the, the balls for Devastator or Hightower should have come with them. Um, so that um, for when you have Devastator, um, they, they should have just came with this figure instead of buying the upgrade kit. Um, here's what I was talking about that they store the 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 drill, the the grind, the vortex grinder um, of Devastator on the back. The arms are nice and everything, as both this arm um, does hold in Long Kyle's foot, and on this arm it does just hold Skipjack's foot. So. Um, Really, the top of the arms are different, but the everything else is the same. The head sculpt is marvelous. Although, uh, I really wish they could have made the middle eye right here, which looks like a nose, we would have made it yellow instead of just a transparent piece of plastic. Not, it's not even yellow or orange or air red or anything. I mean, it's just um, a piece of plastic right there. So, without further ado, let's take a look at his box. And now taking a look at Overload box, <clears throat> right here, we can see that, oh my gosh, this, the CGI render just is amazing. We can see a giant spike on his head right here, and we can see a little baby, little baby spike right there. Um, but um, I really wish Hasbro could have made the spike bigger with a grappling hook or something that would attach to balls or something right there. Um, he does, the CGI render does match how the figure does look like. Just for a quick little view, take a look right there, take a look right here, take a look right there, take a look right here. Um, we can see that it does match the arms, the head, and everything. Although, I really wish they would glow or something like that. Um, the box right here is pretty nice, 66 right there. And now, oh my gosh, the original um, Overload prototype looks amazing. It just makes you think of like this figure, I gotta get it and everything. The uh, Although he does look different than, um, ha on, than his toy appearance, but other than that. And this, if you do remember in the film, his truck, the uh, on-screen appearance is completely accurate and everything. Although I really wish it could store some more stuff and stuff and things, but other than that, a great figure. Um, now taking a look at the final part of the box is the, is the Devastator um, CGI render and the logo right there, which is pretty nice. And now taking a look at the top three Transformers Studio Series, a Wave 10, the top three. So just taking all of this, the top three. Now let's take a look at the top three. And now taking a look at my third most favorite Transformer of Wave 10, Studio Series 65 Voyager Class Blitzwing. <clears throat> now, one of the big reasons is because we um we never saw a Blitzwing toy. Only the I believe like um um I I don't know Nitro or something like that. Some toys like that. Um and being the first Studio Series Blitzwing that we do get, and and being the the figure that I, the Transformer that did silence Bumblebee in the Bumblebee film, I believe this figure tops out third out of all the eight figures that I'm I'm showing you so far. And also one other thing is his his jet mode is almost almost very most almost one hundred percent accurate. Um, his jet mode does look a little bit chubby, and in the film it does look more thin and more more mean and everything. Also, um, the blaster accessory is not the right one. If we just take a quick little look at him, the blaster accessory is too long. If you do remember in the film, it was about this big and and stubbier and a little bit more wider. Um, also, I do love this uh, little hand piece that comes with it where he does silence bomb where he stabs it inside. And one easy place where you can put the hand for storage is in these little, little circular slots. There's one right here. And the hand is inside one right now. So... <clears throat> Without further ado, also, let's take a look at his uh, 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 Blitzwing's box. 
So taking a look at Blitzwing's box, we can see that Blitzwing is almost 100% accurate. Although there are some paint applications that like, like the molding is like a different color than the actual figure, I mean the actual um, CGI um, model right there. And also, as I said, his, his weapon is actually stubbier in his CGI model and right here we can see it's completely longer and everything. Also, um, he does have like some some other logos on the top of his thing like Air Force, U, US Air Force and stuff like that that showed up in the film but unfortunately the toy did not come with that. Right here we can see Blitzwing's face right there, a nice, nice CGI model right there. And right here we can see some product images of Blitzwing. And we can also see that they look completely like a uh, completely different than the actual figure. <clears throat> also because of the plastic and everything and then the outline of the wings and stuff like that. So and he does look a little bit more sleek and shiny than the actual than the actual toy. And right here we can see one final CGI model of Blitzwing in his robot mode. Um we can see that um that we can see all the details that are implied to the CGI model are they basically what I think they actually did just got the CGI model copied and pasted it and created this figure so that um um this this is why um Blitzwing tops out in my third third um most favorite of Wave 10 now we're gonna take a look at studio at our next studio series figure which is in our second place of out of all of the studio series figures and now taking a look at at our Studio Series figure that is in second place has to go to Studio Series 68 Deluxe Class Leadfoot and this figure just blew all the other figures down I mean this figure is almost I mean like nearly accurate the only thing that is not accurate is that there are some paint applications and everything but other than that a great figure and I do love that he does come with a miniature steel, steel jaw figure right here I do love that he comes with it and it's very detailed and everything. This figure is actually really cool and everything. Although Steel John never showed up in the Transformers movie. Um, I'm not so sure why um, it came with the toy as the original left foot toy did come with Steel John as well. And although he never showed up in the film, but I think that the original concept of Dark of the Moon was that uh, Leadfoot would have um, Steel Jaw with him or something. So, but unfortunately, Leadfoot does not. The uh, Leadfoot in the film did not have Steel Jaw, but I think it's a really nice touch to your collection. And now taking a look at Leadfoot, and this figure just blew all the other ones out of the water. I mean, all the paint applications and the molding applied to this figure is amazing. I really wish they could add a little bit more weapon accessories. But other than that, a great figure. The machine guns are nice. This top one is nice. And the missile pods are really nice. And this little piece that does tab out um, gives you the illusion that, his, that he's like transformed all the way. And that his belly is is coming out. Um, it's, and, and it does look like if he did walk, it jiggled like in the movie. But this is just, it's just like a little joint just keeping it right there. But it looks pretty cool like if he was like a bunch of all, all his body parts connected together in some, some way. Now let's take a look at Left Foot's box. And his, his box is just, just as good as the figure. Although there are some misplaint applications and some molding errors on the toy and everything. Um, one thing that I do like is that, that he does have the target symbol on his belly and it did come with the figure itself right here. Um, everything right here is fine and everything, although the number 42 does appear right here when it should have just been appearing on the door as well, on the CGI. And then, um, right here, it's, the, his, his CGI model is really nice. Right here, taking a look at some product images, we can see Leadfoot in his both robot and car form with the, the little steel jaw figure. And we can totally tell so much that that they look completely different. I mean steel jaw just looks so so skinny and everything. And then this steel jaw the actual steel jaw figure itself actually just looks amazing. It with all the wiring and all the stuff on it. Lead foot is okay. I really wish they could add more paint applications to the figure. Like some stickers of the NASCAR like I said with top spin and road buster. And right here this little area right here is shaded in red. When the actual figure itself came with a gray shading right there. 
<clears throat> and now taking a look at the final CGI model is that we do see Ledford posing for battle as he's fighting like some Decepticons and stuff like that. And one thing I really do wish is that these parts of the car that do do look like they are separating. I really wish that this would, would actually just separate and rotate around so that it could look really cool and everything. But other than that, a great figure, one of my great greatest of like my favorite figures, the greatest studio series, one of them. And now, taking a look at the number one studio series of Wave 10 and in my and in my collection so far. And all credit for the number one Transformer studio series um, of Wave 10 goes to Studio Series 69, Constructicon Devastator. And oh my god, this figure is amazing. All the paint applications applied to this figure, everything, the molding and everything, and that the constructed cons could could separate and turn into robot and car and everything. And just for like one quick little view of Devastator, you can see that um, there are a lot of paint applications toward the head and everything. That the head uh, um, has some silver and everything. The vortex grinder does have some of um, sand right there. The the track right there. The little um the the hood part in the front. Everything that the body and then even even the feet as well. Although I do I do think that the feet are a little bit wrong though. But other than that, um a great figure and everything. Um amazing and everything what Hasbro did with this figure and with all the wiring and tubing although I really wish it did come with more accessories like since this is a box set version I really wish it came with like some upgrades with the for the arm for the arms in the back over there um or the or it came with the balls or something the doors in the back or more fa face body parts right there but overall a great figure one of the best studio series figures ever so so um this figure just tops out as number one. It comes with all these paint applications. Um, the molding is incredible. Although one thing I do not like is that these parts do do have a tendency to to fall down. But that is okay. You can just fix them if you tab in these wheels though. But I just have them untapped so that it could look like Devastator's more wide and everything is like open on his body and everything. And also, um, also, his arm is nice and everything. The scrapper arm is nice. Scrap metal on high tower arm is nice as well. Although I really wish they could like, like I really wish that they could have um, made this more accurate and made it look more like a shovel like it did in the film. And but the CGI render on the big box that I'm going to show you in a bit has scrap metal in in this form and everything and it's good and everything. The the body of of Devastator though the the thighs and everything this whole body part is good where overload is everything's good although his head does show up right there and even though it it could fall down like that only if you push it down but other than that a great figure and it does click into right there. Um, one one thing that is cool is that these parts do connect and everything everything is so stable and everything the the arms the hands even the these parts right here can open and they can close also the feet um, can move around in any any angle to your so desire so also also um one also thing is that as you did see in my in my in my not my review but my alternate mode for Devastator I did show you how to pose him in a four legged position which is pretty cool and everything if if you didn't just check out my channel it um just just scroll down and then you'll find it there uh, and I showed you I'll, I'll show you how to um transform Devastator into this alternate mode but other than that a great figure one of the best figures of Wave 10 and and that I believe is just what concludes wave wave ten. Well, uh, right now I'm going to show you all the transformers from from sixty two to sixty nine in a in a little a little short video with all their boxes. But before we do that, we just need to check out Devastator's box. And now taking a look at the legendary Constructicon Devastator his box. As you did see, Devastator is here on the right of the screen. Um. His his CGI model is amazing. I mean, all the wiring and all the detail that is implied, the background and everything. We can see that the head is nice and all, although it does seem kind of big, and the actual figure itself it does seem small. So I really wish a um, mixmaster the head part could have been big. 
long how the foot is nice. Oh, although I did notice these two little these the these two little pieces, which are tabs that do connect to overload, which is kind of weird that the that overload is behind long call, not in front of it. Um, skipjack is nice, and they do look this figure except the head part, and the and the scavenger part does look exactly how the toy does look like, and and well well scrap scrapper and high tower as well do not look like, but skipjack overload, um long call and scrap metal. It's like if they got the toy and then just made it more realistic on the CGI model right here. Um, one thing that I did notice is that there are a lot of ropes um, around Hightower. Um, and there is this shovel. Well, I believe this shovel is supposed to be um, Hightower's head right there. Um, we do see a lot of wiring near the armpits and shoulders. So, some missile cannons. The doors are right there. Um, right here we can see a tiny little 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 cannon right here and the missile cannons up here and more fusing and ar and, and wiring and everything but I really wish Hasbro could have made this figure look exactly like this instead of what we got but other than that a great figure now now that concludes our Transformer Studio Series Wave 10 ranking video and um, right now I'm going to show you all the Transformers 62 to 69 in this short little this short little area this short little um tiny little music area I'm gonna do right now So that concludes our Wave 10 ranking video. I really hope you enjoyed this video of all the Transformers uh, that were released in wave, uh, rank, I mean wave 10 and how I ranked them. It, tell me in the comment section down below if you would rank them differently, if you would put one on this side or one on this one. And until then, I will see you at our next Transformers Studio Series review. I will see you then. Goodbye.